everybody, it's Sunny coming at you from Fukuoka, Japan. A while ago, I asked you guys for questions that you had for me, and I got a lot of great questions, and I broke them up into categories. So today, I'm going to be answering travel related questions. And if you have any more questions or want to know more about some of my answers, definitely comment below for more information. Okay, let's get started. Our first question comes from Catherine L. I'd like to know more about how you first started traveling. Was it a mutual decision between yourself and Joe to? begin traveling or had you both traveled a lot individually beforehand? So I've actually got this question from a few different people. The way that we first started traveling um, was actually a bit around America, but nothing too crazy. We went to Colorado for our honeymoon. We went to California because Joe was interviewing for jobs out in California. But as far as international travel goes, my first time traveling internationally was to London. I did a study abroad there for two weeks and it had amazing ups, but unfortunately it had some of the worst downs of my entire life. I can talk about that in another video, but basically something so terrible happened that uh, it easily could have deterred me from traveling ever again. So yeah, I think I'll do a full video on my first time abroad and what happened and my experience with that. Um, but for right now, with Joe and I, I was really determined to get out and travel. I really wanted to live abroad. I really wanted to see the world. And for pretty much my entire life, I thought that that was just a dream and a fantasy. You know, when I got my first computer, my background was Machu Picchu and then um, a place in Cambodia and, you know, a, a few places that I just dreamed of traveling to. And when I watched movies and somebody would say, oh, this reminds me of a place in Italy, I was like, oh, I'll never get to say something like that, you know? And I would just, I would get sad because it was just this distant, far off idea. But then I started doing more and more research online about these people that really didn't have that much money and were just so determined. And I did this research for like two or three years and when Joe and I first got engaged, I was like, okay, we have to be close to our family, so let's move back to New Jersey and, you know, maybe start saving for a house. Then when that became a reality, I actually started getting really panicky and I was like, wait, I don't, I don't want a house. I don't want to settle down. I don't want to just have kids and, and never leave New Jersey again. And Joe was like, uh, okay, <laughs> you know? So we started looking into different options that we could afford and the best one for us was to move abroad and then from that location be able to travel around. Every decision that we make is always mutual, but a lot of it is definitely me being like, what if we go here? What if we go here? <laughs> Actually, when we moved to Scotland, that was Joe's first time ever leaving the country at all, ever being outside of the United States. The next question comes from Elaine B. And she says, how did you find the people in each place? So I believe this is specifically for Australia and Cambodia, maybe Taipei and, and Singapore as well, but I believe this is for this trip. Elaine, if you want to know about Europe, comment below, let me know, and I can answer that in the next video. Australia, the people were so friendly and so nice, and you know, here in Japan, sometimes it can feel really, really lonely because they don't do small talk or anything like that. And I know a lot of cultures are like that, but coming from America, where I was the type of person that would just start up a conversation with somebody while we're standing in line waiting for groceries, it can feel a bit isolated. So when we went to Australia and I, I was in a bathroom and I, I came out of the stall and a woman was standing there drying her hands and she looked at me and just, you know, hello. And I was like, hi. And I, I washed my hands and I left and I looked at Joe and I was like, they said hi to me. They're so nice. Like, it's just these little things that, oh, they were, they were just great. Honestly, like it's so friendly. I loved Australia so much in Taipei. Not so much with the smiles and uh, friendly banter or anything like that, but we were only in one city and it was a city. So 
I, I don't know if that's very reflective um, of the, the community at large. In Singapore, we only really got to talk to one local when we were asking him um, for his opinion on a good local market, uh, food market to go to, and he was very helpful and really nice. And then I actually got to chatting with an American woman who lived in Japan and then was now living in Singapore on, on a bus, but she was American living in Singapore. She really loved it. But Singapore is also incredibly diverse. You know, they have a little India and they have all of these different communities with very different cultures within one very small place. So I think that would probably impact that a lot and it would be really diverse. Cambodia was really interesting actually because the people were friendly but they were also just incredibly straightforward, incredibly honest about their opinions um, and very blunt which could you know make you feel very like taken aback um, which definitely happened to us our first day there we were like uh by some of the things that people said, just really surprised that they were so straightforward. But once we realized that that's just the culture there, you know, that, that doesn't make them not friendly. That just means that they say what's on their mind, even if normally you wouldn't say some of the things that they normally say. But yeah, when, when you're in cities, you see one side of people and they usually see tourists as dollar signs because there is this huge difference in what they make and what we spend as tourists when we go there. So I don't blame them for that. Um, but then when we got outside of the city, I feel like we got a better understanding of the people there. They were so friendly and just huge smiles. And every time we were like in the tuk tuk or something and we saw a little kid and we smiled, their face lit up with this big smile and they'd wave and say hello. And oh, the kids in Cambodia, I completely fell in love with them. And yeah, the, the people were really, really nice. I definitely recommend getting out of the cities so that you're not just treated as a tourist. We got to go to local restaurants and really talk to the people. And they're, they're warm and wonderful and so, so nice. The next question comes from Ragnarok043 and they say, how do you plan the itinerary for your travels? We kind of like to not be too structured because I think that's a really big mistake that people can make is they can travel and plan the entire trip day to day to day and pre-book hotels and pre-book transportation and until you're there, you don't know what you're going to be First of all, in, in the case of somebody with an invisible illness, what you're going to be physically capable of doing that day and how you're going to feel that day. But you also mentally don't know how you're going to be and what you're going to feel like doing. You don't know if you know something that you heard about is really worth doing in real life or you know after talking to locals, maybe you, you want to stay in one spot for a lot longer than you thought and you only booked one day or two days there and then the next place you go, you did everything in one day that you thought was going to take you three days. And we've met people that have made that mistake before. So what I personally like to do is I like to look up the must-see things and then gauge if that is something that we're interested in. And then in each location I make a list of different things that we might want to see. Out of that list I put the big major things that I have to do and I'm so excited about doing and then I kind of look where these different things are and we really don't book many things in advance. We book like the first day at the first hostel or wherever we're staying and then we kind of play it by ear and see where we want to go. I personally really enjoy that way of traveling. We're doing a trip around Japan in March with my aunt who's coming to visit and I'm kind of doing the same thing. We're gonna have a certain number of approximate days and we're gonna have leeway for those days in Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka, Hiroshima, and then to Fukuoka so she can see where we live. And I'm just gonna have a list of things that we can do and in the morning, depending on the weather, depending on how we're feeling, we'll just go through and we'll say, oh, we can do this today, we can do this, and you know, kind of just see what we wanna do. So it, it makes it really nice and flexible for you. And I definitely recommend trying it. Our next question is from Fine ass Amy Fresh. <laughs> um, love that username. And she says, What countries are still on your and Joe's 
travel bucket list. One difference that Joe and I have in where we want to go, I desperately want to go to Africa. I want to travel all over Africa. I'm so excited about that. And Joe has zero interest whatsoever in Africa. Personally, I do think that that might be because he hasn't done much research on Africa and maybe he's just listening to certain stereotypes that maybe individuals have or, you know, certain crime in certain areas or, you know, they think that all of Africa is like this one location and it's not because it's so huge, it's completely diverse, it has so much culture and yeah. I really desperately want to go to Africa, and that's one place that Joe doesn't want to go. Another place that neither of us want to go is to North Korea, because you would give your money to this fascist, horrible government, and then they treat their citizens terribly and just don't, don't do that. Don't. All those people that are like advertising that they've traveled to North Korea and they're using it to like expose the country. We all know it's a terrible country. We all know the citizens are suffering. Stop giving your money to that country. Anyway, every other country is on our bucket list. Every other place is on our bucket list. Um, pretty much we want to go everywhere and see everything. Uh, one of my top dream locations is Machu Picchu. I want to go there so bad. It just... From the time I was a little kid, I looked at it and I thought that it just looked amazing, like magical, like mystical, and just, I love llamas, and <laughs> I really wanna go there so bad. So that that's on like the top of my bucket list. Everywhere, we wanna go everywhere. I wanna go everywhere. <laughs> Our last question comes from Nita F. Her question is a little long, you can see it here, um, but basically it comes to how do you know that these accommodations that you're booking are safe and legitimate? And that's a great question. Um, so I personally don't like to book any place that doesn't have a lot of different reviews. That doesn't mean that we've always abided by that rule, but if there's a place that seems like it may not be the best or if it doesn't have that many reviews or honestly any situation we always have a backup plan that three dollar hostel that i found in uh cambodia it was in a major city so if we went into that hostel and we didn't like the looks of it if there were bugs everywhere or something like that we would just find another place and I, I personally don't think that's the biggest deal in the world. The Airbnb in Australia that was literally in the back of a van, that could have easily been a negative experience, um, but we had numerous backup plans in that area. We knew where different hostels were that had a ton of amazing reviews and then we had friends that lived in that area as well. So worst comes to worst, we crash on their couch or something like that. Always read the reviews, do your research on these places before you go there. I like to look up reviews from different websites as well and then have a backup plan because you don't know what's going to happen. In any location, if you feel uncomfortable or unsafe, just leave. It's not worth it otherwise. And, and listen to your gut and trust your gut. So I'm going to end it here. I don't want this to get too, too long. Uh, thank you so much for your questions. And definitely, if you have more, leave that below for me to read. If you like this video, please hit that like button so I know and I can make more videos like this. It also really helps out my channel. And if you really liked this video and you have more questions and want to see more, subscribe for more videos like this. Uh, share this video if you want. If you found it helpful and definitely check out my old videos if you want to see some of this information uh, put into action if you want to watch any of my travels. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!